Welcome to Get Married. I'm Colin Cowie. If the Hollywood starlets of yesteryear are an inspiration for your modern look, well, you're in luck. I'll show you how old Hollywood glamour is back in style and one of the hottest trends making its way down the aisle. And I'm Deanna Pappas. Desperate housewife Marsha Cross married her husband Tom in a California ceremony where love and flower girls were definitely in abundance. We'll take a peek into her extraordinary wedding day with event designer Julie Pryor. Get ready, it's Get Married. Weddings should always reflect the personalities of the bride and groom. I've helped create weddings that were modern, traditional, intimate, and many that were over the top. That's what GetMarried.com and I are here to do, help you plan your wedding so it reflects your personal sense of style. For brides whose style is a bit more traditional, you may consider having a bridal portrait taken. Bridal portraits have been a tradition for generations. This is a beautiful photo of you taking your amazing gown a couple of weeks before the wedding. Though it's true that fewer brides have opted to have these pictures taken in recent years, it seems to be making a comeback. It's a once-in-a-lifetime indulgence, capturing you at one of the most important times of your life, but before you have to share the spotlight with your groom on the wedding day. On the wedding day, a lot of the pictures are going to be more candid, and there's a lot of action shots, but this is really so focused on just the bride. It's a formal session set usually in a studio, and the bride would actually be in her dress, so she's gonna look just like she does on the wedding day. And we do close-ups, we do full length, we do three-quarter. Bridal portraits allow brides to capture their beauty in the type of pictures that ultimately become family heirlooms. It's a really important part of her album. A lot of times brides don't really care about themselves in being in pictures, but mom does, and their future husband definitely, when they have that album, years later he's going to look back at that, and that's how he's going to remember her and his feelings about her. But a bridal portrait doesn't have to hang on the wall. Think about using it as wedding announcements or as part of your invitation. If they want to get one printed up in a large wall portrait size to display at the reception, they can do that. It's a really beautiful look on a nice easel. If you do opt to have a bridal portrait taken, it's essential to choose the right photographer. Really do your research on photographers to find ones that have portfolios that do fashion as well as they do weddings. I do approach it just like I shoot fashion. I'll find a spot with great light, I'll put her in it, and then I'll start talking to her as we shoot. I have to get in her head and in her heart and get used to her and adjust my shooting style to her. So every bridal sitting is original piece of art. Besides immortalizing your bridal beauty, there really is a practical benefit to your bridal portrait. It's also a great way for her to test drive her dress and her hair and makeup. A lot of times she'll have another fitting done after the bridal sitting. The one thing you don't have to worry about for your bridal portrait is your bouquet. She's not going to carry her same bouquet, but usually they'll have a florist make up a bouquet that looks similar to the one she's going to carry on her wedding day. Just one more way to make your wedding experience memorable. You can find photographers for all your wedding needs in the local resource pages of getmade.com. Your bridal portrait is just the first of several memorable wedding photographs. After your wedding day is over, your wedding album will hold all the unforgettable memories that you and your husband shared on your special day. But there are other options for your wedding photos besides the popular wedding album. Kennedy International Photography and Design shared how to take a memorable wedding photograph and make it into a lasting work of art. Hello, I'm Scott Kennedy. I'm with Kennedy International Photography and Design. I'd like to show you a few things that you can use to decorate your home after your wedding day. This image is actually from a wedding, but it just shows the actual wedding location. It doesn't actually show the bride and groom. And with this image, we can do it in a nice stretch canvas, which when you hang it on the wall, it will be a nice piece of art. And with this image, the bride and groom, you don't actually see their face with this image also. You actually see the groom's hand slightly touching the bride's back while they're dancing. And with this image, even though you don't see their face, it still shows a lot of emotion and tells the whole story of the day. 
and we did this one in a nice little small detail beaded frame. This is actually an image of me and my fiance. Uh, we did this image at night and we did it on a self timer. Uh, and this really shows how your engagement picture can really reflect the personality of the bride and groom. In this image we did in a nice sepia tone and we have a black contemporary frame going around it which uh, really highlights the black tones against the uh, sepia tones. As far as color photography, there's a few different things we can do. Uh, one of these is do actual canvas print. We actually do a, a real photograph and we print it onto canvas and we, we use the computer to actually bring out the colors and the tones and we actually hand touch it uh, so it looks more like a painting. It's just an animated version of a photograph. And what we have in this image, uh, this couple got married in a vineyard. It's a nice spring day. The sky's nice and blue. This is a perspective that the bride and groom do not get a chance to see. With this image, we have the bride and groom's ring set into the bride's bouquet. And we did this at a really low depth of field, which gives it a nice dreamy effect. This is a shot of the children walking down the aisle. You can see we captured this right when the child turns around. You can see everyone in the background smiling and, and looking on as the children come down. And this image makes a great piece for your wall. And not only that, it makes a great gift for the actual parents of the children. When you're looking for a wedding photographer, it's really important that you find a photographer that can capture these kind of moments, these kind of scenes, and the little small details that you want to remember forever. You can find Kennedy International Photography and Design in the Alabama local resources pages on GetMarried.com. Stay with us, there's much more to come on Get Married. Desperate Housewife Marsha Cross brought some of her Hollywood glamour into her California nuptials, and we'll show you how you can bring some of that old glam style into yours. One Desperate Housewife that's certainly not desperate to find love, Marsha Cross. The Emmy and Golden Globe nominated actress who after only six months of courtship married stockbroker Tom Mahoney in a romantic California wedding. We caught up with Julie Pryor who told us what made this wedding one of her favorites. One of my very favorite weddings was Marsha Cross's wedding. It was just a magical, wonderful event. Marsha Cross married Tom Mahoney who was just a fantastic man. They were a wonderful couple. Marsha and Tom actually got married in a church in Pasadena and they wanted something that was sort of traditional and kind of old world. Instead of bridesmaids, Marsha had seven little flower girls, relatives and good friends' daughters, and it was just so sweet to see all these little girls walking down the aisle. Her wedding gown was very elaborate and it was really traditional and old world and it was this just gorgeous Remacher dress that was really spectacular and she had this just gorgeous long veil and it was very classic. It looked like a kind of dress that you would go back to in 25 years and wouldn't look dated at all. She looked stunning. She looked more beautiful than I have ever seen her look. She really did. They had their reception at the Ritz-Carlton. The cocktails were in one third of the ballroom and I turned that space into a lounge and brought in white carpet and drapery and gorgeous chandeliers and white lounge furniture and we did all white flowers and we brought in a custom dance floor with their monogram on the dance floor. Lighting I think is very important. I think because Marcia is on TV she understands the importance of lighting. So the lighting was very dramatic, the draping was gorgeous. The guests were all treated to a wonderful candy bar. We had all different size glass containers of Marcia and Tom's favorite candy growing up. The cake was very elaborate, very tall, it had gorgeous flowers, it was colorful and they're extremely grand. These great flavors that all went together. People really had a lot of fun with the cake. The guests were absolutely so delighted to be there. It was just a really nice feeling. Everybody was so happy that the two of them were getting married. There really was that sense that this is like a gorgeous, very, very special event that we're proud to be at. And you could just tell that she was marrying the man of her dreams. And I think that they'll be together forever and ever. You can find more celebrity weddings in the real wedding pages of GetMarried.com where you can also follow along with real brides as they plan their weddings. Marsha Cross exudes the look of old Hollywood glamour. From her walk down the aisle to the simply chic fashion she flawlessly pulls off on the red carpet. But these days, you don't have to be part of Hollywood to evoke the old glam look of starlets like Rita Hayworth and Ingrid Bergman. What's old is definitely new again, and the old Hollywood glamour look for the wedding day is no exception. 
from Austin Scarlett's red carpet wedding dresses to Audrey Hepburn's inspired updos, recreating the look of screen sirens of the past is a piece of cake. And I've always been inspired just by the past and just the haute couture elegance of these great sort of society ladies of like the 20th century. So how do I achieve this glamour? The beautiful new pillbox hats that everybody's wearing, the birdcage veils, the beautiful body-hugging satin gowns. Feathers are, were used a lot in the 40s and the 50s and stuff, so that would be good, like little ostrich tufts here and there, and maybe asymmetrical kind of draped things, like maybe one strap or a, like a low swanky back with draped tops. A lot of silk charmeuse would be good. And to accessorize that sexy look. Picking a piece that feels very rich in Art Deco. Um, it's for example, this, you try it on. You could do that. And it's very girly. It reminds me very much of like a Ginger Rogers. The look is pretty dominating on its own. So I'd go kind of minimal on the accessories, maybe a big chandelier earring and kind of not much necklace going on. But I like a little feather and that old fashioned French tool for the veil. But it's not all about what you wear. Hair and makeup play a big role in your Hollywood debut. It's timeless, it's classic, it's bright, beautiful, smoky eyes with lavenders, plums, indigos. Lashes are long, lush, full. The emphasis is on the eyeliner, making the eye stand out. Lips, if you want to focus more on your lips, it's either a strong red or rich browns. Now if I'm going to do a red lip, I like to make sure that the eyes are complementing. So that means simple with a little bit of liner. And the updo. The Hollywood glamour, it was all about that large, big waves and more of a femininity. It's very in these days. 40s glamour look is going to be real different. It's going to be pulled back in the front and have a little bit of height. You can decorate it with a real pretty brooch or a real pretty flower. For the 60s, the Audrey Hepburn, the bump is really big right now. You don't want to look teased at all, but you need that height and that volume. Accessories are at that time like were so phenomenal. You can have a nice piece of accessories on your hair. It's like gives that glam to it. Remember, when getting red carpet ready, find an inspiration that's fitting of who you are and you're sure to shine like a star on your big day. You can find all the latest trends in wedding gowns and accessories in the fashion pages of getmade.com. We've got more to come on Get Married. We'll show you which trends are taking the cake when it comes to creating your wedding cake. And we'll get a tip for adding some wedding chic to your Hollywood glam affair. Haven't quite decided what to do for creating a delicious, eye-popping wedding cake? We've got some of the latest tips and trends to make choosing your wedding dessert a piece of cake. At number five, save money. Probably the most efficient way to save money is going to be sheet cakes in the back. When you have a large event, sheet cakes will help expedite serving. It will cost you less, generally speaking. And if you do fake cakes or have part of that actual display cake be styrofoam, that can be cost effective as well. At number four, be bold. The latest trends I've seen in wedding cakes are keeping everything really sleek and two-toned. We're doing a lot of cakes that are a white or off-white background with black, actually. It's interesting, but black, maybe black ribbons on them or black designs as an overlay. That's been really, really popular. At number three, plan accordingly. Depending on the style of the cake and the design work involved, three to six months is recommended. If somebody wants a very simple white cake, if a bride is looking for a very traditional white cake, you wouldn't have to plan very far ahead. But for something incredible and very unique and creative, you'd want to go with three to six months for a design. At number two, create a tasty surprise. Technically, it won't matter what's the outside of the cake made of and the inside. You could disguise with the frosting the content of the cake. But I would like to have a theme coming through. 
So let's say if we have a lavender cake outside, it would be wonderful to use blackberries as a cream filling because you will have this lilac effect. And of course, nothing is better than a chocolate ice cake. And when you dig into it, it's death by chocolate, different layers of chocolate and mocha. But then really you could do a super white cake on the outside and these guys are very luscious, nutty, fruity, mocha -y, chocolatey, whipped cake, and nobody would know. At number one, consider the season. Some flavors of cake work better than others in different times of the years. For instance, if you're having a wedding in July, obviously you don't want to go with something very heavy. You want to keep on the lighter side, normally in the fruits, like lemons and raspberries and things like that. Whereas a winter wedding, you can do anything. More of the chocolate-based cakes and the more rich kind of cakes, too. But it's personal taste. There are no rules any longer. Every bride is different. To find great cake designers, venues, and other wedding professionals where you live, visit the local resources pages of GetMarried.com. Earlier we saw ways to infuse your wedding with the glamour of old Hollywood. I've got some more tips to help inspire your 1940s look. My book Wedding Chic is jam-packed with thousands of ideas to help inspire you to plan and design the wedding of your dreams. So if your dream includes evoking the glamour of old Hollywood starlets, Perhaps I can give you some inspiration from a wedding I once designed. Now this wedding took place at the Beverly Hills Hotel, which in and end of itself is a bastion of Hollywood society. Your location can certainly play a role when it comes to creating your ambience. Ice blues and silver determine the wedding color scheme. So starting with the invitation and threading its way through the linens, lights and flowers, these colors were reminiscent of the era. The bride wore a very elegant dress with a single embellishment. It was a sheath created with a creamy white silk satin, a cowl neck in the front and a low cowl neck at the back. This was caught on one side with a beautiful 1940s David Webb diamond pin. The look was completed with opera length white satin gloves and she carried a tight pomander of cream and white spray roses. Now the ceremony area was created out of two intersecting aisleways with the ceremony in the center and the guest seated in the round. The focal point being the arbor decorated in a cuff of vendola roses backed by a fringe of hanging lime green amaranthus, creating a very tailored 1940s Art Deco look. The reception carried glamour into the night. We laid down a grey carpet to create an understated demure look and added a powder blue dance floor with the bride and groom's initials. Now to add texture and to keep it interesting, I always like to do three or four different interpretations to the tables. So for this wedding, we topped some of the tables with mirrors and added satin and silk blue linens to others. The chairs were elegant silver charavaris with ice blue crushed satin cushions. Cool blues and silvers were found throughout the wedding to create a sophisticated and elegant ambiance that took you back to a time we all dream of. But I can't forget the wedding cake, the piece de resistance of this reception. Powder blue icing quilted with pearls graced every other layer while draped white chocolate and pearlized icing was the layers in between. This was topped with one beautiful single gardenia, that quintessential flower of the 1940s. You can find more of my advice for creating your chic wedding in the Colin Curry pages of GetMarried.com. Don't go away. Up next on Get Married, Diana will show you the hottest ideas for comfortable yet fashionable footwear for your wedding day. What's hot right now for weddings? ESNY Occasions, fabulous footwear that looks as good as it feels. Every bride wants some comfort on her wedding day, so that's why we designed this great line. All the EVA flip-flops are really lightweight and you don't have to worry about wearing a heavy shoe. Some of the styles are beaded and some are a little bit more plain. We were very conscious to design a line that had different colors in it. Most of our styles come in ivory or white. We also have some that are silver, and it just goes with any dress. The black ones we did because they're great for your bachelorette party, or they make a great gift for your bridesmaids as well. All the flip-flops come in different heights. We have some styles with a mid-wedge that's about two inches, or we also have a style that's about three and a half inches high. And for destination weddings, the very flat shoes are perfect. They all come in a lightweight mesh bag, so they're easy to bring with you on the go as a second pair of shoes or just as your main shoe. 
We've also got a great satin beaded slipper for flower girls as well. They come in pink, white, and ivory so that they'll match her dress and she'll feel like Cinderella every day. Many of the styles that we have, you can wear after your wedding as well. They're not just bridal specific. They're all very nicely adorned. They don't dress down your look at all. You still will look gorgeous and your feet will look great. You can find ESNY occasions in the What's Hot pages of GetMarried.com. Get Married's Blogger Brides is the online community that connects you and other brides with our team of acclaimed star bloggers. Make friends, chat, follow my blog, and get some great ideas all on Get Married's Blogger Brides. Thanks for joining us today, and don't forget to visit GetMarried.com any time of the day or night when you need inspirational, helpful advice to plan your dream wedding. I'm Colin Cowie. We'll see you next time.